Hello, I'm David Wormsley. This is about what's coming to Gravity Forms version 2.5, which at the time of recording this is in beta version 2. And although it might not seem obvious on the surface, this probably contains the most significant updates I've seen in the eight years that I've been using Gravity Forms and perhaps in the entire 11 plus years that it's been out. It's already been a long beta testing period. I think it started in June and I've no idea when it might eventually come out. And I'm reassured by that. It makes sense that Gravity Forms, the biggest player in WordPress form building, at least amongst professional users, which has a fabulous reputation for it being incredibly robust and reliable, that it takes its time. But I think with Gravity Forms, things have to move slowly. I think part of its benefit is the fact that it's become, over the years, the center of a very large ecosystem of plugins. There are a number of companies that have built their businesses, services, and add-ons around Gravity Forms that it can't change code as it is doing in this update without giving time for everyone to adjust to have a healthy ecosystem, which is one of its main benefits. Okay, I'm very conscious as well as I go through these changes that if you're not used to Gravity Forms and perhaps you're using one of the newer form builders that have been very much geared to make it easier for beginners that have more page builder-like functionality, this might seem a little bit lame and that Gravity Forms is catching up and that is true, it is catching up on that kind of use. But I think Gravity Forms, because it's been around and it's on some very important sites, it has to focus on things like accessibility, security, and making sure that everything is stable. So it's slightly different, I think. Okay, let me go through the main changes. So the first one I've got here is that it's got a cleaner Gutenberg S styling to the form editor and they've revamped the settings pages. So let's take a look at the present live version, the 2.4, whatever it is. So this is what you see if you open up a new form, it gives you some instructions. You click over here, drops the field over to the left and you enter all of the details here. Let's just go to an actual form. So you can just go in here and change the settings that you have and you can just move one form above another with drag and drops. So you can arrange things that way, but it's looked like this you know, all the time that I've used it. Okay, and this is a settings page and they've adopted the standard WordPress settings look. So really no surprises there. Let's move on to 2.5 as it is at the moment. So if you open up a new form, this is what you get. Things are much cleaner. It says simply drag and drop fields or elements you want onto the form area over here. Let me do that on an actual form. So let me grab the radio button. And I'm going to place it. You can see here, it tells me where I'm going. So I'm going to place that just below there. And if I click on there, then I can go over to the right hand side rather than in the fields itself and make all of the changes. And you'll see that it's very Gutenberg like, the same kind of icons here, but simpler because here we've just got something to get rid of it, to duplicate it, and this one to move things around. And I like this. I like the cleanness of the Gutenberg editor anyway, but I do have some difficulty because so much is hidden and it needs to do so much more. But the options on a form like that are limited. So it's, it seems clean, but easy to navigate around. So this works fine for me that my own experience is that just moving to stuff being on the right it took me no time to feel at home with this. So I like it. It's kind of a triumph for me. It makes a lot of sense for them to make the form Gutenberg-esque because that's the way that people are going to experience WordPress going forward. And that is the only similarity. It's only aesthetics here. I mean, of course, if you're using the Gutenberg editor and you've got um, gravity forms on, you're going to find a block that you can add in the same way you could with widgets before. But that's it. That's where the similarity ends. It's just a look. But what actually surprises me then is if we go over to their settings page, they've moved away from the default uh, WordPress look that they have. So in some ways they've they'd move the, the form editor to look more like WordPress and then move the settings page to look less like WordPress in my view. So I'm not a big fan on people who do branding here. 
I must admit, it kind of looks nice. So it's not a problem to me. And also I'm fairly proud with, when it comes to my clients that I can offer them gravity forms because it's such a big player and people can do stuff with it. It's a selling point. So I kind of, I'm making an exception to the rule. I don't mind it personally, but I don't know if it's a really good idea. I'd be interested in what other people think because it seems a bit of a conflict in what they're doing there. Okay, probably the biggest story, and you got a hint as I was dragging things in, is that there's the drag and drop column control up to four columns. This has been what's made for many gravity forms difficult to work with because you've had to add in some CSS. So let's just have a look a little bit on this. Let's go over here. So I've dragged that one in. Now I can move this in between here. So up to four columns. So I can place this in the middle there and it's just kind of easier to to work with and I can adjust the columns as well over here. So that's nice because previously you know you would need to actually go in to I think the appearance over here and put in custom CSS if you wanted to do this. Of course everything you could do before you could do with this so there's no there's no change it's just that this makes it kind of easier to work with. And I think interestingly enough, it's still not going to be the answer to every complex arrangement. There are already, already some articles which are interesting about how you can get some more complex arrangements. So we've really got a, a situation where we've got the rows and we've got then columns within them. But if you want to put other things that would need to be in their separate columns, like these different fields alongside something like this, then you still need a little bit of CSS to make that kind of arrangement and there's another article as well I think yeah about aligning the submit buttons as well and again that requires a little bit of CSS nothing complicated but I just thought I would point that out also other things with this form here it's not advanced in the way that you can go undo something that you've changed so you know you could refresh your page if you don't like what you've done and everything happens after you've saved so maybe it's not needed but it's not kind of that experience not a page builder experience with it but i really like it i think it's nice um let's go to the next thing here now interestingly enough this is what um, gravity forms put as their leading story this is the first thing that they put down on their list of main changes and that is there's going to be front end user experience uh, changes that is going to be revamped with a focus on usability. Well, usability always comes up with Gravity Forms anyway, but they're being helped by a specialist, Ryan uh, Reitfield, I think that's how you say it, at level level. Let me just find her. I had a look at their site there. So they're a big digital agency, Dutch agency, and they have a focus on accessibility. And I completely agree with her that it's not just a courtesy to some, it really is an essential component of quality of work. So I'm really pleased that they are looking at this kind of stuff, getting advice. And it leads into the next feature, which is the is new form markup and styling as well. So some of that's going to make it easy for styling, but there is that's the, the fundamental code changes. The reason I started looking at this is that if you've seen other videos I'm doing, I'm doing this project called Beaver Junction where I'm trying to share templates, want to do exactly the same and share styles with um, other people. But I know there's going to be some changes, so I'm looking at those changes before I put that kind of stuff out. And they say also there's going to be improved theme integration, so when you add it to themes, it's going to naturally look a little bit better just out of the box. And they're talking to some theme authors about that. Let's just go over the other additions that they've listed. So this won't mean much to me or many people that there is a new settings API. This is for people who are developing add-ons for Gravity Forms, doing clever stuff, who want to have settings pages for those. So that's there. Um, there's added security enhancements. Well, it's almost there with every update and small updates anyway. Security has been one of their top priorities. A lot of people work with them on that as far as I can see, and that's a good thing. The next one, I just have to skip over because I can't remember what this is, but conditional logic that pages uh, pages hidden via conditional logic will no longer appear on a page navigation, which alleviates end user confusion. Um, you might need to look into that yourself because I can't remember what that's about. Okay, <clears throat> some of the nitty gritty now. So the big change really, I guess, if you're styling stuff, is that they've changed the markup. So now things are ripped, uh, they're actually wrapped in a div or field set, not in a list item any longer. And there is a whole list of other changes to the markup here. I'll just 
pick those out. So this is what I'm looking into so I can do some more styling to share some stuff with people. So that is looking at there. And they are adopting CSS Grid as well. That probably going to make it a lot easier if you can understand what's there to make complex layouts with CSS Grid. And also, I like this is that they are moving to REMS as well with this as their typography. And I just did a video last about the fact that I'm moving that direction as well. But of course, big thing for Gravity Forms, an important thing for them, is that things need to be backwards compatible. And this is for them, probably for the first time, this is why it's significant, I think, because I kind of break in some of that backwards compatibility. But not entirely, because when this new version comes out, there will be a setting that's in, already set on to enable legacy markup. So things will not change. The CSS and the setup will be the same until you allow this new set up the structure to apply and there's a small thing that all the scripts including inline are now being deferred and loaded to the footer for performance you would expect something like that to be in place anyway and nice little touch here accessibility warnings let me just see if i can find those there they are so you're going to get some little warnings when building out the forms where things may uh, be a problem to other users i think that's quite a handy thing to have because i I wouldn't be considering this when I'm building the form and this is going to be a handy reminder. So that's pretty much it. That's what we've got. I think I've covered everything I need to. I've already mentioned that the reason I'm looking at this is part of my Beaver Junction project. I want to be able to share some JSON files, some templates that I've set up with the styling that goes with that. And I'm going to follow this up with a couple of other videos because I realize there's a couple of easy to miss, well, I think they're easy to miss features in Gravity Forms because I miss them. But I know colleagues did as well, particularly if you're a long-term user. And I thought I'd do a quick video as best as I can on why I continue to choose Gravity Forms for me. And finally, because I got an email reminder that they didn't have an affiliate scheme for Quite odd they did it was closed for a long time but i am one and they sent me a reminder saying that they've got their black friday sale on so i'll mention this if you're watching this new and you happen to be somebody considering it i think the chances are very unlikely but there is uh well 30 percent off if you're getting standard core plugin if you're getting the the uh, the Elite license, which I have, then it's 50% off and then 40% off the Pro. This is happening, I think, the day before Black Friday and it's going through to Cyber Monday or the day after, I think. I'm not sure. You'll need to check. But, uh, you know, I don't really earn much for doing my videos and sharing stuff because I talk about stuff that's been around for a long time, not the new stuff. So if you are considering buying, I'd really appreciate it if you clicked on my link and I got something back. But otherwise, you know, not a problem at all. Thank you so much for um, watching this video. I hope it was useful. If it was, then please give me a like and consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks so much for your time and I hope to see you in another video. Bye-bye.